Welcome everyone, this is Learn Civil Engineering bringing you a lecture within the Hydraulics 1 series introducing the SI unit system. There are seven universally recognised fundamental quantities and for each of these we can define a fundamental unit of measurement along with their respective symbols. The choice of unit does not have to be unique. For example, length is measured in metres with the symbol of a lowercase m. However, we could alternatively use millimetres, centimetres, kilometres, etc with their respective prefixes, but I'll touch on that a bit later. Next we have mass, measured in kilograms with the symbol kg, time, measured in seconds with a lowercase s, thermodynamic temperature, measured in kelvin with an uppercase k, electric current, measured in ampere with an uppercase a, amounts of a substance, measured in moles with the symbol mole, and finally, luminous intensity, measured in candela with the symbol CD. The fundamental units are independent and therefore units of any physical quantity can be expressed in terms of or as a combination of the fundamental units. These units consisting of a combination of fundamental units are known as derived units. To test your understanding of the use of fundamental units, here are some examples to try out. The unit for force is the newton, with the symbol n. The unit for stress is the pascal, symbol pa. The unit for energy is the joule, symbol j. And finally, the unit for power is the watt, symbol w. All four of these can be derived using combinations of the SI base quantities, length, mass, and time. Pause the video and have a go yourself at deriving the SI units for these four examples. So now that you've had a chance to attempt these, let's have a look at them. We know that force equals mass times acceleration, and then that acceleration is equal to length divided by time squared. So, using the SI base units, we can derive that 1 newton is equivalent to 1 kilogram meter per second squared. For stress, we know that stress equals force over area, and so, using the SI unit for force derived above, we can work out that the SI unit for stress is one pascal is equivalent to one kilogram per meter per second squared. Energy is equal to force times length. So applying the same concept as above, we can work out that the SI unit for energy is one joule is equivalent to one kilogram meter squared per second squared. And finally, we know that power is equal to energy divided by time. So using the derived SI unit for energy, we can work out that one watt is equivalent to one kilogram meter squared per second cubed. So well done if you got all of those correct. This ability to derive the units for physical quantities will be very beneficial for solving more complicated problems in the future and for checking your results. In many civil engineering situations, it is typical for the loads, stresses, moments, etc to be large in magnitude with respect to the base SI units. So, where appropriate, decimal multiples and submultiples of SI units can be written using the SI prefixes. Here, I'll be listing out the most commonly used prefixes, and it would be a good idea to commit these ones to memory. However, there are more, but they can be easily found online. Magnitudes with a factor of 10 to the power of minus 6 can be denoted with micro in front of the unit. A factor of 10 to the power of minus 3 can be denoted with milli. A factor of 10 to the power of minus 2 can be denoted with centi. A factor of 10 to the power of 3 can be denoted with kilo. A factor of 10 to the power of 6 can be denoted with mega. And finally, a factor of 10 to the power of 9 can be denoted with giga. An example of these being used is the standard atmospheric pressure, denoted P subscript A and will be introduced later on in this series. The standard atmospheric pressure is equal to 1.01 .01 times 10 to the power of 5 pascals, but this can be more conveniently written as 101 kilopascals. Now that you have a solid understanding to the basics of the SI unit system, we can move on to more complicated problems. For the rest of the hydraulic series, since this is a mechanics module, we will only be using the fundamental units for length, mass, time, and thermodynamic temperature. This has been a lecture by Learn Civil Engineering. 
If you have found this lecture useful at all, please show support by subscribing to the channel and leaving a like on the video. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.